dear students we are going to start our new lesson that is variation and selection okay variation and selection right you know first of all we should know about variation variation is actually the difference between organism of the same species what is variation variation is the difference between difference between organism of of the same species for example humans belong to one species but one person right for example one person person name is i'm selecting here like any name for example akram right another person ali right is a very good student with us right so these two students you can check these two students appearance is different from each other even here i will put another name to so that we know usama right so that we know if you check like usama and ali uh, appearance face appearance all that is different from each other even they belong to same species even they having same number of chromosomes but still the appearance is different still blood group is different height is different height different skin color different blood group different all these characters different so this is actually variation am i clear now you know selection i will move to that later on selection means that you know like which one have to be selected by nature or which one have to be selected by environment and that will survive better so the one that having a good a variation having a good adaptation so they will remain in the world they will remain in this surface of the earth they will select by nature so this is called selection so in this chapter we will study about variation and selection what is variation and what kind of variation should be in organism and which one will be selected within environment up to here difference between organism of the same species called what variation now why variation what are the thing that are responsible for variation what are the factors factor that cause the variation the first one is genetic makeup of an organism 
genes, our DNA, alleles that we are receiving from parents that are responsible for what? For variation. Maybe one person having dominant allele, another person having recessive. That make difference. Even in the sequence of gene, there is difference. Even in the combination of gene. So, you know, in this gene, you know, gene actually the DNA. So DNA is not like this, that Usama and Muhammad Ali DNA is 100% same. There is variation. There is differences in nucleotides. If you compare that with another species, so the very, the difference between this DNA and that will be more than human. But if you are comparing with a human, so human DNA will show resemblance, but it is not like this that it will be 100%. So, no, there is still variation. There is still differences. There is still, you know, there is still difference at the nucleotide sequence. But as compared to other species, we are near to each other. Our DNA is near to each other. Our DNA sequence is near to each other. Right? Our chromosome number is same, but other species chromosome will be different. So these things are responsible for what? Variation. DNA genes responsible for variation. That bring variation. I have blood group AB, another person having A. Why? Because I have allele for allele A and B, and another person having A allele only and O allele. Because of this difference, one person is different from another, within the same species. And this is called variation. Another factor for variation is environmental factor. Environmental factors, environment, this environment includes his habitat, light, nutrient, all these is coming in the category of environment. To which environment my gene are exposing? That include, I told you, light, and for, you know, uh, even, you know, disease, a person is exposing to which kind of disease he is exposing more or less. So that will bring variation. If you check the sickle cell anemia, it happened, that came, why? If you check the history of sickle cell anemia, the red blood cell change into sickle shape because of the attack of uh, plasmodium, that is the that is the causative agent of malaria. So that's red blood and red blood cell variation. Right? So disease is also one of the factors through which our gene are exposing. Nutrients. Right? Hot and cold temperature. Person living in heart region is different than from another sunlight, all these things. All these are environmental factors that having effect on our body, that causing variation, right? Now, we have two types of variation. We have two types of variation. You know, an environmental factor, like, you know, if you just take it, example of plant, availability of water, and not have a, no less availability of water. Some plant is living in, uh, in a dry places, right? That are different from another. Why? All these are environmental factor to which they are environment to which they are exposing. And because of that, changes is coming in their body. They have an effect on your gene even, right? So types of variation. The, actually, this effect in uh, is an express expression of your gene, okay?
we have two types of variation okay what variation we have continuous variation another we have discontinuous variation my clear continuous variation controlled by two factors factor 1 your genes factor 2 environmental factors and am i clear while this continuous variation controlled by your genes now continuous variation and discontinuous variation difference the so first thing is in continuous variation no distinct category no distinct category and no limit on the value and trends to be tend to tends to be quantitative what is it now let me select okay so let me select another color so that i may not face any problem with the black 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 a white background yes i hope it's clear now to all right boys so the first is continuous variation so no distinct categories and no limit on the value and tends to be quantitative while in discontinuous variation distinct category right and no end between categories right like there is no any value between two categories right it tends to be qualitative first i will give you example of discontinuous variation let's suppose if a person having blood group a another person having b another person a a b and another person having blood group a if i am going to represent them through graph so for that i will make which graph bar chart bar graph right okay this is the blood group and population right now this one is a b a b and oh, let's suppose this is people and population a have in population a per the number of person having a blood group is less b more this is just example now if you check here you will not find any other value between a and b do you have any value no you will not find any value between b and ab like i mean that there is no intermediate between two values nothing between two categories a or ab b or o but nothing between a b and nothing between b and o nothing this is just clear right just same for you can check here like uh, you know chang ruling am i clear chang ruling chang ruling we have also you know no intermediate some people can roll their chang just check check your chang i can roll but some cannot those who cannot tell me in the chat right so there is like two condition 
if one person can rule that time right another can't another person can't so there is no intermediate between these two am i clear you know up to here it is clear right now i will take another example so if this tongue ruling there are two like there is no intermediate that is clear straightforward thing now for another i will come you can come toward another condition uh, this one eye color you know what this eye color there is it even though that is controlled by the gene that's why it is here discontinue but you know there is like difference is more so i in that case then i can put it here in continuous okay am i clear even though it's controlled by the gene eye color but you know there is many variation is coming even in green there will be many category so because of that reason i will put that in continuous variation okay and fingerprint i will keep it here you know why fingerprint this is a little bit confused these two words fingerprints also because you know i will keep it because it's controlled by gene it's controlled by gene but there is still you know there is still like you know very straight forward it is in discrete form like fingerprint one person another different but you can differentiate between that easily that's why it will remain here in this continuous these two is a little bit confused okay is it clear now if you come toward the finger length wait i will go to that later on is it okay up to here now bar graph i'm using for it bar graph right because between them there is nothing am i clear and limited number of phenotype with no intermediate just like blood group limited number of phenotype and there is no intermediate if you come toward continuous variation so no distinct category no like no like this that a b there is it between a b there is other category let's suppose for example if i draw you a graph for your height your class height so you will see here i will draw for that line graph because i have value at every point even if a person height is like uh, five feet six inch another person is five feet seven inch between five feet and six inch and be between five feet and seven inch there will be also a bit difference even between like at any point i can get value at any point you can get your value right there is many intermediate between two category between two extreme there is many intermediate at every point you can get the value this line graph so usually we are actually representing continuous graph always by line graph if it if it is in the exam line graph from that you can judge that, that it is continuous variation right your height weight heart rate all this is what continuous variation it show us you know the quantitative data number data here it is qualitative leaf length it's usually mostly you will check this in past paper leaf length leaf length one is like this another will be same but still there will be difference a little bit so many if you draw the graph for it you will get a value for every point if you do a survey if you study a plant leaf so you will see different category of that leaf such as for finger length you will also see so this thing is controlled by a lot of gene and environmental factor if a plant is you know if they plant having more good food and you know like all the thing is food means like nutrients availability is more environment is good so definitely leaf length will be more right same for the height height is controlled by both factor gene and le gene and environment range of phenotype between two extreme range of phenotype means more range many person skin color continuous a within brown within white skin color you will see also many categories so all this is what continuous variation okay uh 
all right students so today the topic of discussion is causes of variation up to here we discuss about variation that variation is actually you know the differences that is in the individual especially individual that are in the same set belong to same species right and then we discuss about continuous and discontinuous variation today the topic of discussion is causes of variation <coughs> sorry what cause variation right so you know actually variation is the changes that happen within individual of same species okay now mutation play important role in that variation right environmental factor one we discuss already but you know mutation also play very important role so let's discuss that permanent changes to the phenotype permanent characteristic that can be inherited are due to genetic makeup of an organism this may be altered thereby increasing variation is a result of mutation or of sexual reproduction you know if permanent change happen in your phenotype phenotype means in your physical appearance okay so that will be because of what because of genetic make or because of your gene right if changes come in your gene so that will lead to what permanent change in your phenotype permanent change in your physical appearance so this permanent change in my physical appearance happen because of what because of mutation mutation is actually the change in normal sequence of dna or also the, these changes can come because of sexual reproduction how it will come we will discuss these two in detail that how mutation and how sexual reproduction is responsible for permanent changes to our phenotype or how this mutation and sexual reproduction is responsible for variation definitely if changes come in our phenotype right if there is changes in our phenotype it means there will be more differences if there is more differences so this is actually variation variation is differences between organism right i am different from other individual of my species because of you know because of my dna sequence is not similar with them 100% or there is there is different differences in my gene okay and these differences came because of what mutation right these differences is also because of sexual reproduction right so the first one is mutation mutation is actually the change in gene or chromosome we have two types of mutation the first one is change in gene be with me the first one is what change in gene okay is it okay change in gene this is the first one right and the second one we have change in chromosome change in number of chromosome okay so change in gene mean for example the normal sequence of a gene is a t c g a t like this am i clear now because of mutation this c and g replaced by some another nucleotide or this c and g completely deleted become you know disappear from this sequence because of mutation so it mean the sequence the normal sequence of this gene change is initially when there 
was no mutation to this code for X protein. But now when mutation happened to this sequence, maybe the normal nucleotide replaced by other, or maybe complete deletion, deletion of that nucleotide. So because of that, this sequence is now not, this sequence is not coding for X. Maybe it's code for another kind of protein or some modified form of X. Okay, so this is mutation and gene. While we know gene is actually the part of chromosome, right? Like gene is present in chromosome. It's a part of DNA and present in chromosome, right? So it means this mutation is happening in DNA that is present in chromosome. But chromosomal mutation is actually when a person receives more or less chromosome. For example, normally a human having 46 number of chromosomes. But due to some reason, an individual that, you know, individual having 47 number of chromosomes. A newborn baby received 47 number of chromosomes from his or her parents. So it means that here he got or she got extra chromosome from parents. So this is also mutation and this mutation is chromosomal mutation change in number of chromosomes or for example a person can also get 45 number of chromosomes this is also abnormality so this change happened because of what because of chromosomal mutation right now the first one okay how this what is the reason of mutation why these mutations is happening. Why these changes is coming in our gene, these changes is coming in our chromosome. So the first reason is mistake in the copying of DNA is the cell ready to divide, pairing with incorrect test. You know, DNA have to be, you know, this is your DNA, right? Okay, or I will, you can check here. For example, this is our DNA right? So, you know, a process is happening in our body called what DNA replication, in which one DNA will replicate and that will do a two DNA, right? So that is called DNA replication. At that time, you know, the original DNA strand will be copied a new DNA will form. For example, the normal, for example, it is our normal DNA strand, A, T, C, G, A, T. For example, this is our normal DNA sequence. Now, this is one I'm just here considering for your understanding only one strand, right? From under alpha same will happen with that. So now from this one strand of DNA, Another strand will form, right? Okay, uh, let me consider another problem. So for the, this this DNA, I will open it. Uh, it may, for example, we have this two strand of DNA, A, T, C, G. Okay, for example, we have this, and two, this also another one should be another strand T, A, and T. Uh, C, uh, sorry, G and uh, C, correct? So we know, we know already that A will also form hydrogen bond with bonds with uh, T and T will form hydrogen bond with A and C will form with G and G will form with C, right? Now, what is happening during DNA replication? These two strands will separate from each other. Am I clear? And when it's separate from each other, so this one strand will act as a template for the formation of another strand. Each strand will act as a template for the formation of another strand of DNA. Okay, now it means this is one strand, original strand, and this is 
another original strain, right? So if DNA is forming from it, so with this T voltage, with this A voltage, and with this T G voltage, and with this G C voltage. Okay, so you can check it is just like original DNA. And with this T A voltage, and with this, uh, you know, T voltage, with this G C voltage, and with this C J voltage. Am I clear? You can check these both DNA are similar with that of original DNA. You know, when this DNA replication is happening, so there is also a specific, after completion of that, there is a specific enzyme, right, called DNA polymerase, but no need to learn that name for time being. Just keep it in mind, that polymerase is checking that that all the strain, all the nucleotide attached to the one, like to their uh, complementary means like A attached to T and T attached to A and C with G like that. That mechanism is called proofreading mechanism to check for L. But sometimes what happened, that also not work well and sometimes some nucleotides skip from that. And error happened because of some reason that enzyme didn't detect that error. And for example, instead of, you know, here C with G, and with this sometime like another nucleotide can T chem or any another, like here supposed to be G, but instead of that T or any analog of, uh, analog means similar to G came here, right? And that replaced the nucleotide, right? Even A can come, T can come and that, instead of G now here is other nucleotide. So it means that error happened. If when this DNA replicates, so if this was coded, this sequence will now not code for that normal protein. Because, because what happened? Incorrect base replacement happened. Incorrect base. Pairing with incorrect base. Like here supposed to be G, but instead of GTA, any other uh, nucleotide came and make pairing with that, right? So one reason of mutation is mistake in coughing up DNA is a cell get ready to divide. When the cell is going to divide, so at that time, the cell have to have two DNA, right? For that, the cell have to uh, replicate DNA to make two copies of that. But you know, during that replication, some mistake happened and pairing happened with incorrect base. Damage to DNA, some environmental factor. To this DNA, some environmental factor can also damage this DNA, right? Like that environmental factor may be in the form of, you know, radiation may be in the form of certain chemical to which our this DNA export and that that disturb this nucleotide even that may cause deletion, right? Or, you know, or that will insert to the chain and that can also disturb all this DNA replication process and instead of normal nucleotide, other nucleotide can also come and replace the original one, right? So this is another way of mutation. What is the another way? Some environmental factors. We will discuss that also now in detail. And another reason of mutation is uneven distribution of chromosome favoring cell division. Okay. Uneven distribution of chromosome favoring cell division. Okay. What does it mean? Normally, you know, our, for example, this is our somatic cell, right? And this, this. So it will convert into 23 and then 22. Am I clear? And all the gametes, this, that will form, it's supposed to all should have 23 number of chromosomes. I should have what from 
ट्वेंटी नंबर आप क्रोमोसोम आई क्लियर ट्वेंटी थ्री नंबर आप क्रोमोसोम आल शुड हैव लाइक दिस इट्स नॉर्मली इट इज हैपनिंग विद मी लाइक दिस बट व्हाट हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ सम रीजन if normal sperm sperm pump for example in this case let's suppose we have these two sperm 23 and 23 but if it happen like this if this sperm did not get 23 it get 22 and this one get 24 right and and this sperm fertilized by a normal ova normal ova means 23 number of chromosome so individual will form and that individual having 45 number of chromosome so this is chromosomal abnormality or let's suppose this this sperm having 24 number of chromosome if this fertilized ova normal ova 23 so what will happen a person will have 47 number of chromosomes here i am giving you example with sperm but it can also happen with ova it mean and ova also chromosome number can increase or decrease from the normal okay this is abnormality am i clear why this is happening why this chromosomal abnormality is happening you know a phenomena called non disjunction a phenomena called what non disjunction you know normally what supposed to be happen for example a cell having 23 number of chromosome right so normally what supposed to be happen that this 23 if this 23 number is converting to two cell and both having 23 and 23 am i clear 23 and 23 right so it means that this 23 replicate this 23 replicate and form other 23 so that's why 23 go to one side and 23 go to another side this is normally but non distinction is if normal condition it's not happening usually but sometimes it happen non distinction and what will happen in non disjunction let's suppose i am considering only chromosome 1 remember boys here for your example this per, this is chromosome 1 right in this chromosome 1 is now in replicated form okay so when the cell is when chromosome when the cell is dividing that which cell the cell having 23 number of chromosome right so what will happen this chromosome one is now in replicated form so this one by this centromere it will split into what two chromosome chromosome one and chromosome one now one will go to one cell another will go to another cell this phenomena will happen with all the chromosomes all 23 chromosome chromosome 2 chromosome 2 chromosome 3 chromosome 3 am i clear so all will move to this will go to one side this will move to inside this will move to another side right so at the end you know this cell will have 23 number of chromosome and this one will have 23 number of this is normally but what will happen in non disjunction this centromere will unable to what to be divided means as if it's this centromere remain with like you know it's not split and and the chromosome not separate from each other so it means if this chromosome one let's suppose go to that x cell or sperm cell so what will happen this for that that person one gamete will contain how much chromosome total number of chromosome 24 why because non disjunction happen chromosome fail to separate from each other 
and when chromosome help to separate from each other so one gamete gets one extra chromosome while the another gamete he will deficiency of that am i clear so now if this one extra containing chromosome fertilized by normal ova so what will happen this person will have a person who develop he having how much number of chromosome that person will have 47 number of chromosome so if this is abnormality this is abnormality am i clear up to here this person will have some symptom you know having different symptom okay that will be not normal all right boys so the example of it is when a person having extra chromosome right so that is called down syndrome okay that person is abnormal right he is you know there are different symptom of down syndrome you know like mentally retarded facial appearance all that are the symptoms of down syndrome okay now one of the example i just want to tell you about gene mutation gene mutation you know when a sequence of dna on a single chromosome is changed it means that when gene change so that is called what gene mutation am i clear is the result a defective pro protein may be produced no protein or no protein at all even defective protein will produce or no protein at all right so that can lead to considerable change in character characteristic there are many example of that including sickle cell anemia as we discussed this topic in detail right now remember boys it is not compulsory that mutation will always be harmful it is not compulsory sometime mutation can be beneficial also that can also give benefit to people right some mutation may cause harm in one environment but may be a benefit in another case sickle cell anemia is example of this i will tell you the history of that you know in what why our it is that you study the history of malaria you know in for in africa right first time you know this malaria happened to people when it happened to the people right so okay, i'm talking about that history so what happened in Af when you know malaria caused by a parasite called plasmodium right so there was outbreak of malaria in that population what happened and that you know this plasmodium lived inside the red blood cell the life cycle for this life cycle you know is one of the stage of life cycle it's also completing in red blood cell okay so when this plasmodium is living in red blood cell okay it means that if there's shape of this red blood cell change so maybe this plasmodium is unable to live inside okay so what happened in that there was outbreak of malaria in that population and in that population for the first time they study what sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia means that some individual cell become sickle cell later on they studied they confirmed it through research that actually mutation happened in the gene of the gene that is responsible for this normal red blood cell and that gene then that gene mutation happen and the cell change into sickle cell and and those individual 
who still change into sickle shape and that individual you know plasmodium are the cases of malaria but no are very less potential from that they figure out that this is a beneficial mutation for this individual this mutation is beneficial because the malaria was very dangerous disease at that time okay so this mutation protect them from that malaria okay so in that case this mutation is beneficial but unfortunately what happened you know these two definitely the genes are in pair and for sickle cell anemia that gene you know the gene that is responsible for sickle cell anemia that was also in pair so let's suppose i am considering that for what i can consider for sickle cell anemia normal okay um, i will consider here for example is for the norm okay and small is for the abnormal so when a person having is and is it means he is normal he having no sickle cell anemia his red blood cell will be normal okay and malaria parasite cannot take on this person easily malaria parasite called plasmodium can complete its life cycle this person is he is more sensitive to malaria but when a person having capital s in small s so this person even he is the carrier of what sickle cell anemia and this condition is heterozygous heterozygous means having two different allele for specific gene and in this person this person was more sensitive to what malaria so for this person this mutation was beneficial his normal gene that was capital that convert into what is normal ele that was capital that convert into it means if a person is heterozygous so it heterozygous for sickle cell anemia is he having resistance to malaria parasite so at that time you know this mutation was beneficial right but unfortunately what happened if a person gets both alleles small and small so it means he received this both small and small so it means this person having what having sickle cell anemia right he will have resistance but in another side from one side he protect but the he having uh, now like in another side we think a uh, this is not good for him this mutation because he got sickle cell anemia am i clear all right right so if you check here the normal gene for hemoglobin this is normal gene for hemoglobin when this is normal gene for hemoglobin if transcription of that gene happen so definitely that will produce normal messenger rna and this normal messenger rna will transcribe transcription of that messenger rna will happen means conversion of that messenger rna sequence right to a sequence of amino acid protein and that will code for normal hemoglobin and when it code for normal hemoglobin so hemoglobin is actually present in red blood cell so it means that red blood cell will be by concave shape round that will be normal but if hemoglobin gene is mutated so one base is changed and about one gene i told you already about this in detail in inheritance chapter that what is the name of that what is the sequence in that change into what right so because of that mutation and that one nucleotide one base complete gene of that amino acid change and normal amino acid well norm sorry normal uh, yeah, normal amino acid well replaced by abnormal and when abnormal amino acid came in this normal change 
आप मैसेंजर आ रहे हैं सो दैट विल आल्सो कोड फॉर फॉल्टी हीमोग्लोबिन दैट विल आल्सो कोड फॉर टू फॉल्टी प्रोटीन दैट आर मेकिंग हीमोग्लोबिन एंड व्हेन दैट मेक हीमोग्लोबिन दैट हीमोग्लोबिन शेप डेफिनेटली व्हेन इट्स मेक दैट हीमोग्लोबिन सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट हीमोग्लोबिन the red blood cell shape will also change and that will become sickle shape right because of only single nucleotide change single nucleotide mutation the complete method the the one new one amino acid of protein replaced by abnormal amino acid and now a person having what sickle cell nm right further detail i discuss with you in, in here about this topic in inheritance chapter other you can check that also actually boys you, in this case you can see in this sickle cell anemia you know the red blood cell shape changed because of new allele arise in that population why did new allele arise in that population because of the selection pressure and that time selection pressure was what at that time pressure on the population was malaria parasite to show resistance to that malaria parasite our gene or allele sequence of that population change and a new allele arise if normal form of that new allele arise up if not you know sorry a new allele arise of that normal gene that was put in for it that's why to protect that population from malaria parasite so in that case in one side it was beneficial to protect the person from malaria but in another side you know if a person got that abnormal both allele then he having a sickle cell anemia so that is the side effect of ar you know the negative aspect of it am i clear to him dear students in last in the last lecture we discuss about uh, uh, mutation right and types of mutation so today we are going to discuss about what are the causative agents that cause mutation right so radiation radiation can increase mutation rate mutation occurs spontaneously right for no apparent reason there is no clear reason but it is happening spontaneously right there are very rare event have you a number of factors that factors called mutagen can increase the rate of mutation like agents that causing mutation and that may be the possible cause of mutation is called what mutagen so mutagen is agent that causing mutation important mutagen we have radiation that can damage your dna okay gamma and ultraviolet x ray radiation can damage your dna and so it can cause mutation right gamma ultraviolet and x ray radiation can cause can damage your dna and cause mutation now chemicals can also cause mutation they can also act as a mutagen like thars thars is actually certain substances in tobacco smoking that can cause mutation high concentration of some preservatives some chemical that we are using for the preservation purpose to preserve food preserve food means to keep our food for long time 
to protect that from germs. That is called preservation. So for that purpose, we are using certain preservatives. Such chemicals with high concentration are also very toxic and that can increase the risk of mutation. Some hormones that we are using for plants, some plant control hormone can cause mutation. Right? Even some chemicals that we are, you know, spraying on plants to control herbs and that, that can also increase the risk of mutation because it can enter to our food chain. Mutation may link with cancer. You know, a mutagen that cause uncontrolled cell division is called carcinogen. Carcinogen is actually what chemical that can cause cancer. Chemical that can cause cancer. What will happen in cancer? Your cell will start uncontrolled division. Why this cancer will happen? because of mutation. Because of change in the gene that normally control our cell division. Because of change in that normal gene. And that change will happen because of chemical. Right, our radiation. So simply I will tell you, mutagen that cause cancer is called what? Carcinogen. Am I clear? So this is one reason of, of what? Of variation. Mutation is one of the reasons of variation within a population. Another reason we have sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction also lead to variation. How? Sexual reproduction mixes up genetic material in three ways. And producing new genotype. So, we, and so definitely variation will be there in genotype. If genotype is changing, phenotype will change. Physical appearance of an organism will change. And for that, sexual reproduction play important role. How? So let's move to one. Right? So by three ways, the sexual reproduction can cause variation. Number first one, remember, is we discussed already in the process of meiosis. Right? So, you know, in sexual reproduction, gametes involved are no. Am I clear? Now these gametes are actually six cells. And these six cells will form through process of meiosis. This is the type of cell division. So what will happen in meiosis? very important event will happen there that is called crossing tour. The homologous chromosome will exchange their parts. For example, this is one homologous chromosome and this is another. They will combine, they will come near to each other. And in some places, they will exchange their parts. 
like in this case, you can check the green chromosome part move toward the yellow and the yellow move toward the green. It means exchange of DNA, exchange of part of DNA happen here. When exchange of part of DNA happen, so it means we got what? Two chromosomes that are not 100% identical with the original one because of exchange of genetic material. So you check here that during meiosis, let's suppose we having this, what we having, we having 46 number of chromosomes, right? So 46 will change into what 23. Am I clear? So in this example, we have, for example, two chromosomes at the end we got in each unit one one. To convert into what? To diplite convert into haplite. So when this 43 is changing to 23, when this 43 or when this cell is changing to six cell, so are the way that will, and the way what will happen? Crossing over will take place. In this meiosis, chromosome will come near to each other, homologous chromosome will come near to each other and they will exchange their parts in some place. Because of that, new combination of genetic material form here. So let's suppose a gamete, this gamete having chromosome just like that of original one. And this gamete having also chromosome just like that of original one. But this one and this one, correct? These two chromosomes are different than that of original chromosome because of the exchange of R. So if this gamete go and fertilize ua or egg, whatever, right? So what will happen? If this gamete go and fertilize ua, or if this is ua and this is fertilized by sperm. So it means a new, new zygote will form that will not 100% similar or that will not similar with their parents in some character or some features. Why? Because of this crossing work. So simply I will tell you that in crossing work, genetic material change. Genetic material, the DNA, in some places it transfer from one to another and some changes will come in our so variation is crossing over is one of the cause of what? One of the cause of variation. Another reason in sexual reproduction is that two, two gametes coming from two different parents. So it means both parents genetic makeup are different and new zygote will form. So coming up two different gametes from two parents is also one of the factors that contribute to variation. Right? Another reason we have independent assortment. Independent assortments mean that chromosome make different combination during formation of gametes. For example, if we check here, we having two homologous, this is two homologous chromosome and these are two homologous. So during formation of gametes,
these two during formation of gametes definitely they did this this is a two chromosome right or no if they, these are four chromosome they will convert into what two because each cell contain diploid number of chromosome these two are homologous and these two are homologous similar in shape check similar in size structure so this homologous chromosome can make combination with this right are this homologous chromosome this one the green one big this can make combination with this correct like this can make with this am i clear or even with this and this homologous chromosome can make combination with this right and this one can also make with this the yellow one right so from if you check here four different gametes form from just two pairs of chromosome it means that chromosome more independent it is not like this that i am going to one gametes and you will also go with me combined no they are moving to different to gametes and dependent each one will receive 23 23 but chromosome are separating from each other and dependent gene are separated from each other and dependent and forming combination of different gametes So simply, I will tell you that reproduction is responsible for the variation because of three reasons. The first reason is in reproduction, gametes are involved. And for the formation of gametes, the process of meiosis happened and meiosis, a strip happened that is called crossing over. And crossing over two chromosome, two homologous chromosome exchange their part. And because of that, new genetic combination of the new chromosome that are not genetically similar way, 100% are similar with that original one. So that new combination of genetic material is the cause of variation. Another reason in sexual reproduction is two different gametes are coming from two different parents. So definitely mother and father genetic makeup different. In two different genetic makeup cell are two different gametes will combine they will form zygote. So definitely zygote will be different. Another reason during formation of gametes, chromosomes separate from each other independently. Okay, so these factors contribute to what variation in population. Am I clear? Dear students, the topic of discussion for today is variation and natural selection, okay, that can lead to the evolution of species, arising of new species. Up to now, we discuss about variation. Up to now, we discuss about variation. And, you know, as I told you that variation can mute like we discussed the factor of variation and some variation is not good for organism some variation beneficial for organism that variation can increase the chances of an organism to survive an environment variation brings certain features that that increase the chances of that organism so the increasing chances of organism to survive in an environment that is called adaptation right so 
SPs have seen living organism different from one another. Some of these variation may be in organism well suited to its environment. So some have make no differences in another make the organism less and less well suited to its environment. So organism that is well suited to make the most of limited resources within its environment is shown adaptation to that environment. That organism that is well suited to an environment, right or no, and they can survive better in environment, that, that is called adaptation. That organism is well adapted to that environment. And when it will be possible if that organism having good feature that can make that organism to survive in that easily. For example, cactus zero pipe plant, having different adaptation, having different feature than that of hydropite plant. Zero pipe plants are those plants that are living in less supply are the place where there is no more water. While hydropites place where there are plenty of water, means more water there, more water there, the place. That is called hydropites, right? So they both having different features, like the characteristic of both are different. For example, zero pipe leaf, there is, you may not find leaf, if there is that surface area of zero leaf, well, less is compared to hydropites. Why zero pitic leaf surface area is less so that it prevent evaporation of water? Eva because in the place where this plant is living, there is no much water. While hydropites surface area of the leaf large. Why the surface area of the leaf is large? Because at the place where these hydrophytic plants are living, that there are more water. These plants having no issue of water. So evaporation of water will take place from hydrophytes easily. Right? Now, so you can see here, uh, this is just example of adaptation, okay? Align his adaptation that enable it to capture prey efficient. What are the adaptation? Structural adaptation, having sharp teeth, and, right, and claws. Biochemical adaptation, extra protein digesting enzyme lines have, so that they digest meat, or prey meat, and behavior adaptation. They are hunting and groups. So these adaptation helping the lion, li, lions to survive in forest and capture prey, right? Now, they having these adaptation because of adaptive features, because they having these adaptive features, these, these having these adaptive characteristics, so what is adaptive features? Adaptive feature is an inherited, inherited functional feature. Inherited means they received that from parents. And functional, fe functional feature means these characteristic working, these 
means like that can help with them right these are functional characteristics of an organism that increase the fitness of an organism these are functional and these can help them to be to live in a specific environment environment am i clear so organisms that are well adapted show high fitness the probability that organism will survive and reproduce in environment in which they found you know if they having adaptive feature so they can that feature should that feature that adaptive feature should help them to survive in environment and survival of the within environment is actually fitness the one that having more chances to survive in the environment which is called more fit it is not it is not like the one that you are doing it is not that fitness fitness to increase your chances of survival is it clear now you know actually first of all regarding this adaptation charles darwin he was a scientist and he work on he work on this okay and he studied this you know he he actually visited uh, he visited different uh, iceland right uh, where is that okay yeah Uh, you can see here allowed to see his most famous observation were made in galapagos islands when he studied this iceland right so he found that one bird he found difference between you know species right so some species seem to have adaptation to life on a particular island he found differences between organisms right and especially he studied at that time birds and he studied that one bird shape different from another especially when what he observed the most beak of the bird right so that was like you know that was different from another there was some little bit differentiation so some species seem to have adaptation to life on a particular island according to that island some species having special adaptation and had similarities like one island species were similar in that island that species were right they two are similar but in other iceland that organisms show differences for example he study one bird in one iceland one type of bird so in that type of bird when he study in another iceland there was differences so it seem to he he figure out that difference is coming within organism right within organism and environment is selecting that organism that is environment is selecting that organism that having good differences regarding regarding that environment i simply i will tell you variation is coming within organism and environment will select that variation that is the fittest that is that increase the chances of that organism and that environment other will eliminate okay so charles darwin thought that species were not fixed he thought that species are not fixed within species listen me very carefully within species right for example i am selecting one kind of species within one kind of species he found what he found 
that one bird belonged to one species and that bird was different. He found some little bit differences in another island. Even that belonged to the same species. So he figured out that change is coming within species. And that change with the passage of time that is increasing and when it is increasing with the passage of time, even it reached to that limit that well produced, that, that change reached to that limit that the one organism, the original one, right? The new one changed from the original one because of that. I mean simply that the change reached to that limit because of environmental exposure, that the one, the new one is not not much similar is that with original one. Even they reach to that point that they reproductively isolate from each other. They can't do reproduction. And this, a new species will arise on the surface of the earth. So this is called what? Evolution. This change with the passage of time is called evolution. And evolution can lead to what? New species. Right? He presented this theory, but at the time, you know, most people believe that at the time the Darwin lived, most people believe that each species was fixed and had been put on earth in its current form by creator, by God. Am I clear? But what Darwin present? Darwin present this evolution, right? He present this theory that no changes is coming in the species because of environmental exposure. If one bird is one island is different than from another because another island environmental condition different from the from this one. So if this one, this bird migrate from Iceland A to Iceland B, maybe the Iceland B environment change from A in a time, maybe with the passage of time that Iceland B bird reach, uh, change much and that change to reach to that point that that is, that will become individual species and that will unable to do reproduction with the original one. So thus a new species will arise on the surface of the earth, right? So the origin of species, then he published his book. And that the book, Natural, Natural Selection, the origin of species by natural selection. And this book, then he presented his point, his theory points, okay? So why is the factor that enforcing the species to change or that enforcing an organism to bring some changes in order to adapt with the environment, that factor is actually selection pressure. And that selection pressure in the form of environment, in, in the form of environment, maybe in the form of you know, availability of food, maybe in the form of uh, predators, that is selection pressure, that is enforcing the organism to change, right? As I give you example of the insect, right? That with the passage of time, you know, the white color insect change to what? black color. Why? Because at that time the selection pressure was predator. Black color can easily camouflage, can easily hide from the predator, from birds. So selection pressure, that was what predator. So because of that change come in that, and the white color change into black. Now, what are the points of that selection pressure? 
let me tell you before going to points to that selection pressure. Another example, you can see here in this example, we discussed about, you know, uh, this is our in animals like, you know, a wild animals, right? And to lob, you know, if you know, you select uh, two population of this, we should, you know, with the passage of time, if you study this, right? And you, you, you give like two condition to this animal, right? Or no. So you can see if we consider one such character, for example, neck length of this animal. So we should be able to draw a graph showing how this characteristic is distributing and population. If the environmental apply a selection pressure, and what is the selection pressure here on this animal? Selection pressure on this animal is limited availability of fluids per food. If limited availability of fluids per food, it means there is less food. So it, now, one part of the population may be fewer. One part of the population may be fewer. Maybe means one part of population may bring some changes in order to sur survive in this limited availability of fluids per food. Maybe that changes in the form of nick length. Maybe some of the, uh, maybe some of the organism, right, bring changes with gradually their nick will increase in length. Why? So that they can easily reach to live that are present in trees. So the one having more nick length right so that will survive because there is selection pressure is limited availability of leaves for food and they can reach they having adaptation which adaptation these animal have they having adaptation to reach to leaves that are present in trees far away so this part of that population will survive while the other will eliminate it from the surface right so even, you know, this changes can sometimes, you know, the changes, if the two population of this antelope were separated from one end, the natural selection might favor different adaptation in the environment. Eventually the two population of antelope could have so many different adaptation that they can no longer enter the and when they can't, maybe they reach to the, the adaptation reach to that limit that they are no longer interbreed. If they are no longer interbreed, if they can't do reproduction further, so they are said to be different species. A new species arises now. Am I clear to here? All right. Now let's study the points of natural selection. In natural selection means environment will select the fittest one. We test one means that having better adaptation. So these are the points of natural selection. The first one is overproduction. All the organism produce more offspring than can possibly survive, and yet population remain relatively stable. Any organism should have the ability to reproduce, and they will try if they are, their reproduction rate is high and they are producing more offspring, so that will survive more. The chances of survival will be more. A female paper moth may also may lay 500 eggs, but, but the moth population does not increase by the same power. It's not like this that all these 50 will survive. Still, if they are doing reproduction, they should do poor reproduction. But still, there is also other factors that is influencing that population. First factor is when they are, you know, when they are making more offspring. So as compared to other, their chances is more to survive. But there is also competition between their own offspring. Listen my wording very carefully. Listen my wording very carefully. If one species producing more species as compared to other. So as compared to other species, their chances of survival is more. There will be still competition with other species, but his chances is more. Now, here this, there is also competition between their own offspring. So this is called struggle for existence. Organism experience environmental resistance. So they compete for limited resources within environment. 
They compete for the limited resources within environment. They are competing for the resources that are less in the environment. For example, food, they are doing food competition for food. Several moths may try to feed on same nectar producing flower. So the one that having good adaptation that will reach to that food, other will not. Now for that nectar, what they have to do? A, a moth that having stronger filler, having better feeding mouth part, may be better camouflage, right? And be better camouflage. The one with moth will be better, the one having stronger filler and having feeding mouth, and can easy camouflage so that will survive better so it means variation will start in them so which variation will be better a good variation so that they help them to reach to food so that they help them to camouflage from the predator so that will live is the example i give you even there is also chances of a take up predator you will see here survival for the fittest individual that are most successfully and the struggle for existence they are the best suited adapted to the environment struggle for existence means best suited adapted to the, the the successful one right they will start struggle survival of the fittest means the one that having good adaptation that will survive so individuals that are most successful in the struggle for this, what does it mean? That are the best adapted to their environment, are more likely to survive than those without the advantage, those without these advantage. Paper moth, dark color moth resting on soot covered trees, trunk, means they, this black color can easily camouflage. They can't see well by this predator, by this bird, right? As compared to white color moth, right? So it means this well, black will survive and the population of black will survive. And the well-suited adapted individual are more likely to breed. The one that is well-suited and that adapt more. So they are more likely because their other friends are more, partners are more. So more likely to breed, to do reproduction and they will transfer that beneficial gene to their new generation. And this, right? So the pass on their gene to new next generation, the process is natural selection. Passing of beneficial gene according to the environment to their uh, new offspring in order to survive, to increase their chances of fitness within environment is called nature selection. And dark color moth parents will produce dark color offspring. Now let's suppose I'm taking example of bacteria, right? Resistance in bacteria, how it will evolve. Let's suppose I have in petri plate in that I'm, grow, I'm going to grow bacteria, right? In this petri plate, I put what antibiotics? Antibiotics. Right? Now, if I put here, you know, different types of antibiotics. Right? These are antibiotic this. Right? So this anti in this presence of antibiotic bacteria will not grow, right? But those bacteria will grow that having resistant toward that antibiotic, right? Or no. So those bacteria will grow. Now is you just, you remember your last concept is I told you that with some antibiotic, this, this is one antibiotic. This. You will see there will be 
dyskelyrosome. While this antibiotic disc, for example, this antibiotic disc, I have penicillin. And this is another antibiotic like leufloxacin or any other antibiotic. Around this antibiotic, you can see around this antibiotic, this bacteria growth is less. I mean, this penicillin is more effective against this bacteria. That's why these bacteria didn't grow with the near to this antibiotic disease. But here, if you see the clear zone is less, it means this bacteria is more resistant to that. Now, when I'm exposing this bacteria again and again to this eufloxacin, so what will happen? This clear zone with the passage of time, you know, this is, sorry, when I'm exposing, I'm taking my, this example, sorry, because the clear zone here is more, it means this bacteria having less resistance to this antibiotic. But when I'm exposing these bacteria again and again to this penicillin, so with the passage of time, what will happen? This clear zone will become less. Why? Because changes come in that gene that is responsible to show, show resistance to penicillin. Like new protein producing that bacteria are new gene express or some changes come in the genes of bacteria. So because of that, that bacteria start to show resistance to this penicillin. It's right. So here selection pressure on this bacteria is what penicillin. Selection pressure on this bacteria is penicillin. This penicillin make bacteria to originate new gene or express the gene or mutate the gene. And when, like you know, in one of the bacteria that resistant, for example, arise, accidentally, in one of bacteria that resistance gene arise. So that resist that bacteria that will now doing what division like that will increase population. So that resistive gene will transfer to their offspring. Right? So selection pressure enable bacteria. Selection pressure make bacteria. Selection pressure actually bring changes in bacteria. Bring some adaptive feature in bacteria in order to adapt with the new environment. Selection pressure is penicillin. And because of that, new gene arise are previously gene mutate, right? New are new gene express, and that gene having now that makes such protein that that show resistance to penicillin. And that gene, that bacteria transfer to their offspring during division. Right? When they transfer to the offspring, so now this generation, this, these offspring have what? Resistance to antibiotics. So this is another example of adaptation to the environment regarding bacteria. Uh, dear students, in the last lecture, we discussed about natural selection. So today we are going to discuss that in more detail, that uh, what will happen in natural selection and how nature is selecting specific character on the basis of the fitness of organism with that environment, right? Okay, so let's see, first we are considering height. Height is a characteristic that shows continuous variation in antelopes. Now, if you see here, number of categories, you can check here, small, average, and tall. So antelope population is like this, if you check here, this show us a stable population in which average antelope are more, right? Is it okay? Now, 
when food is only available for high branches now it is stable population in most of the you know upspring are here average size upspring are more here okay now but when food is only available from high branches mean when there is no availability of leaves on ground so definitely the leaves will be available in trees so for that reason this antelope should be tall and in that environment this tall population will select it means before it was average was more in that population but because of environmental condition change there is no more availability of leaves or less availability of leaves or grass on ground so in that environment what happened gradually tall antelope increase nature select what nature pick out picks out the taller antelope that selected what the taller one right after many generations so what happened the graft moved toward tall and now we have maximum what tall population more because of natural selection because of environmental change environment select the fittest one the fittest one means the one that having uh, features that are according to that environment so the feature in this antelope was what long are uh, they were tall they can reach to food easily so because of that environment select this one and the graph chip toward top okay now in the last lecture we also discussed that environmental changes can lead to origination of new species on the surface of the earth now let's suppose two population of same species we are selecting here one species right okay antelope how two different population are how two different species will originate from that two different species will originate from that on the basis of environmental exposure their exposure to environment am i clear now two population of same species could be separated by mountain region here we are selecting here you know uh, two different environment right different selection pressure might be exact at opposite side right so on opposite side two species are present one is on one side and another up the mountain another is present on another side so it mean both are exposed exposing to two different environmental condition one side of the mountain one environmental condition another side of the mountain another environmental condition right so in this case if you check here on one side we will check nature selection by food availability here on in one side of the mountain food is less mean leaves on ground are less so what happen this species and to log what happen with that with this animal small and to log gradually disappear here why because of less availability of while tall one tall population increase right so and this case in another side of the mountain there is what this antelope is facing problem of predator antelope is facing problem of predator nature selection by predator predator you check it here line so who who can see tall and develop means the lion can see tall and develop easily more easily so the one that is small they can hide from this predator easily so in this population what happen small antelope 
remain, while the tall one, the population of tall decreases at the best job time. Now, the two population now have so many different adaptations. This small and this tall envelope, they, with the passage of time from generation to generation, the adaptation increase in them and the neck become, neck become very tough. And this remain very short from the actual antelope. So what happens? So this one is now not showing resemblance with the actual antelope. It's not showing resemblance with their parents, right? While this one also in change too much that it is not now able to do reproduction or do interbreeding with the uh, with his own any of own kind of animal that was interlocked. So with the passage of time, it's become it's changed into another appearance. This is what giraffe. While this one changed into that remained too much short, too much small. So that is what detected. This is another. So it means we got two different species from same kind of animal that was interlocked. Because of environmental exposure, antelope changed too much. In one case, there, there was no availability of leaves. So for that, gradually the tall, the environment favored the tall one. And with the passage of time, you know, their neck size increase increased, and that reached that is now no more able to appear with the parents, no appearance with the parents, and no can't do interbreed or can't do reproduction with the original kinds of the animal from which it arise. So now it is considering what individual species that is in the form of giraffe here. And in this case, this population faced problem of natural selection. There were availability of food, but the natural selection was predated. Here is more risk, the lines are more here compared to this side. That's why the small antelope survived. And the one that was the short, small, small, that survived more, and they remain very short from the original one. So that's why the character was transferring from generation to generation. And when that character was transferring from generation to generation, so the another generation also remained very short. Small, small is that of original. So that small character, that population favor in the world that was very small, they can hide from the predator easily. So that small, that remained too much small that it was not showing resemblance with the original one now. So now it is individual species. So this is the natural selection theory that nature will select, environment will select the fetest one. Fetest means that having that feature that uh, that having adaptive feature according to that environment, so that will survive. Dear students, today the topic of discussion is adaptive features of plants according to their environment. So in today's lesson, we will discuss about adaptive features of plants that are living in environment there are le in less supply of water or there is less availability of water in that. So that plants are called what zero pipes. Okay, zero pipes are plants that live in places where water is in short supply. What are xeropytic plants? Plants that live
plants that live in places Okay, where water is in short supply. Where water is in short supply. Okay, those plants are called what zero pipes. Okay, while another plant we will discuss today that are what hydro pipes. That are hydro pipes. Another one we have hydro pipes. Plants living in plants are uh, sorry, plants. I should write plants, right? So, plants that Plants that live in places where more supply of water, where water is in Where water is in large supply or more, means simply we have more water present, like aquatic plants, like what aquatic plants. Aquatic plants, plants that living in water, that living in sea, right, and river, ponds, lake, all that. So that are hydro pipes. So today the topic of discussion we have plants that live in place where water is in short supply. Mean. These plants should have specific adaptation in order to survive in that harsh environment. In order to conserve water, because they have an issue of water supply, there is less water supply, right? So the first adaptation in these plants First, I will discuss leaf what are the adaptation of leaves what are the adaptation in leaves of this plant first in the leaf of this plant having less surface area Area, right? Even in some plant, leaves convert into spikes. Okay? So, less surface area, if I give you example of this pine tree, so the leaves are in form of spikes. Like this. So, this less surface area, or if some plant having surface area less, means 
narrow leaf or the leaf is in form of spikes. So this spikes having less surface area. This surface, less surface area actually help these plant to conserve water. How? Because if surface area is less, so rate of evaporation of water will be less. Evaporation of water of water will be less. Why? Because less we the first thing is number of stomata will less and second area of leaf will exposed to sun less. If less area is exposed to sun, so the rate of evaporation of water will be less. Okay, number of stomata in these plant leaves will be also. Right, tomato is actually the force and leaf through which the gas exchange happen in plants, like carbon dioxide is entering for photosynthesis, our oxygen is giving out, right? So through that evaporation of water can also happen. So this number of stomata will be less in this plant in order to conserve water. Is it clear? Another leaf of this plant will be covered with a thick waxy layer called cuticle. Thick waxy layer called what cuticle? That waxy layer act is a, uh, you know, it it's also it it show resistance are. Uh, through that, you know, that is vexy in nature, which is lipid in nature, through that water can't evaporate to water. Okay, so that vexy layer, that cuticle layer, may also prevent evaporation of water. Another point we have about tomato. Usually in these plants, they have Sun can stomata. Stomata is in pit. Stomata is we are like in a group. Stomata is not exposed directly, but stomata is in group, right? Are in pit. You can check here that uh, if I show you here. Let me go down. Sunken stomata means that stomata is not exposed directly, but you can see stomata in pith. Pith means like you can see this, uh, for example, let me show you in this leaf pith. Yeah, you can see here, this is this make like a guru. Yeah? This is leaf, and you can see like this guru. So inside that stomata is present. You can check here in this, here, right? Here it is in the form group. Inside that pit, you can check here is I this one, right? And inside this group, there is stomata, okay? And so inside it is not exposed directly like, okay? So this stomata when, for example, if it is in group, right inside this, you can see this tomato is inside this face, right? It means tomato is not like directly exposed outside. So this group help what? The first thing is, you know, it actually, here a trap, a uh, trap, what this moist layer of moist moisture. Right? Why a trip moisture here? Because this tomato is not exposing directly to wind. Right? We know that wind will take water molecule in the air from one place to another. So when tomato is in groove or when it is in pit, means that it is inside, it is not exposed directly to the environment. So it is actually this pit helping this tomato to 
be hide from wind. And in that place, water molecules are at that place, moisture will be more. If moisture is more, it actually decreases the stiffness of what diffusion. It means the rate of diffusion will be less. Am I clear? Stiffness of diffusion gradient for water vapor, it is reducing here. What is it? Stiffness of what? It is actually reducing stiffness. of the diffusion gradient. Step for water vapor. What mean by this? It means that, you know, outside water is like, if for example, I give you another example. Here, this is tomato and this is exposed this exposed to wind directly. So here is no water molecules outside, right? So it means the out area is dry. If the out area is dry and inside this water vapor. So dependently through by the process of diffusion, water vapor will move to that dry region easily. But when stomata is in pit, so what it what it that pit or that gear, that inner region will help what to trap what moist layer up water and that most layer of water helping and what to decrease the stiffness of diffusion gradient and mean in and out you know the stiffness here stiffness is more uh, water molecule in this case inside is more and outside less which is dry condition so water will move easily from end to out easily but up, up, if outside is there moisture so the rate of diffusion will be low water will come out from that one thing is this Usually, this pit region, all right, or this out, this leaf is covered with this even pit region, or even this whole leaf is covered with spikes, right? The leaf of this plant is covered with spikes. That spikes, you can see here, this is, you know, this is actually maram grass this grass is present and you know in dry places and you know in especially in desert and this plant having special adaptation like you can see this having sunken stomata and having spikes this spikes help what this spikes also help to try the first thing is to prevent you know to decrease it, the wind so that this place may not put like just like as i discussed with you here right so this projection also trap moist layer of wind most layer of water right so that also decrease what stiffness of diffusion gradient for water molecule it's actually you know because it show resistance to wind so wind will not take this water molecule to another place it will remain and thus the diffusion of water molecule from inner plant to out it will decrease. Am I clear? Another point, you know, some plant having special adaptation, just like in this plant, the one that I selected, this leaf, Meran leaf. Leaf are ruled. It is ruled. They are ruling their leaf when they are in this supply of water. There are specialized cell in that. And this ruling also help in what? They rolled up leaf. How? This roll leaf help in what? To trap moist here. And to again decrease stiffness of diffusion gradient for water. Am I clear? So this one I discussed with you, roll leaf, thick waxy cuticle, trap what air in center with high water potential here reduce moment of air when it is reducing moment of air in that place water wafer will remain and that will decrease diffusion gradient and stomata in pits <clears throat> am i clear up here <clears throat> and for <clears throat> 
All right, boys. So, boys, this is the adaptation of leaf. So you should be careful if they are asking. Sometimes they are asking question only related with leaf, and we are we are writing about the stem art. If they are asking question about the leaf adaptation, you have to give leaf adaptation answer. Okay, you should not be general because in is this plant stem also different than others, right? How? Let's see about stem. I am writing now about stem of this plant. Okay. You know, this plant stem, we use a special word, most of these plant having what? Succulent stem. What mean by succulent stem? Succulent stem, that soft stem, that store food, store, sorry, that store water and that are photosynthetic. Okay, that can store water. This is fleshy soft stem. You can check here with in cactus plant. This one, this stem, right? So this stem actually in cactus plant, you know, the leaf are not there or it convert into spikes. These are spikes in that, right? So even that spikes also help that to prevent from predator. Okay, like someone, may not, like animal may not eat it. And succulents store water, right? So it store water and when these plants eat, they will need that water, they can utilize it. If you cut it, you will check there, that is very soft and more water inside it. Okay, so this is another adaptation even regarding the stem of this plant. Another adaptation of these plants, this one, I will put it here, what one, two, and third one, we will write what? about roots. These plant having long roots. Why so that that root, we know root absorbing water from the soil. So that that root reach to far away water. Because it is living in a place where the water is in short supply. Am I clear? So this plant should have long roots, right? And wide spread its root. It means like swollen stream, okay? It is about, this is for you, it's swollen stream. Right? And enriched with water. I hope this is clear. Actually, all these adaptations help the plant to um, decrease uh, evaporation of water. And we know evaporation of water from aerial parts of plant is called what? Transpiration. So it actually decreases transpiration rate, right? And you know, your question is related with this roll leaf. So the roll leaf help, you know, if the, the leaf is just like this roll. So this, you know, in this place, most like most layer of water molecule will remain here. Wind will not take that to another place, right? So outside, inside water molecule and outside also, it means like the dip, the stiffness of diffusion gradient for water vapor is less. But if water, if we take this, if it is open and we take this molecule to another place, so outside it will remain dry and inside water molecule is more. If inside water is more, so in diffusion, now these my three diffusion, these molecules can go from higher to lower easily. The rate of, you know, the rate of diffusion also depend on stiffness of gradient. If more gradient, if there are more gradient, Created in difference. If more difference, for example, here molecules are more and outside is less, right? So that will easily come from more to less. But here is more and here is uh, like, you know, 
also more, but not too much less. So the diffusion rate in this example will be less as compared to the first one example. All right, boys. So another we have hydrophytes, right? Those plants that are living in water. Those plants that are living in plant that live in place where uh, more supply of water, right? But uh, I will little bit modify it. This, these are those plants actually that are living in water. So if they are living in water, it means having uh, more supply of water, living in water. These are aquatic plants, right? Now, what are the adaptation in these plants? First one, about leaf, right? Leaf surface area will be more. Why? Because there is more supply of water so that, you know, uh, if there is more supply of water, so no matter if the rate of transpiration is high, no problem. Okay, so their leaf is compared to uh, a zero pipe leaf surface area more, right? And, you know, this deep surface area more, this also helps because inside this leaf, there is more air spaces. Inside this leaf, there is what more air spaces. And this more surface area and more air spaces inside the leaf, it helps them to be buoyant. What mean by this world? They contain more air spaces or large air spaces. Okay, buoyant. More and large air spaces that make them buoyant, right? I mean, they can float easily because you know they their leaf are present on the surface of water so they can float do floating and then surface up water easily right this air make that buoyant inside if there is air so it helps them to float easily right just like when you are uh, swimming right and river or swimming pool, some people use a tire containing, you know, uh, 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 like there is a name of that is, I don't know, like a thin, but we can call it just like a tire that's filled with air, right? So that help them to float. Okay, another one, you know, the leaf, you know, uh, first you, this is leaf up land plant, right? So land plant contains tomato down on the lower epidermis. But these plants, tomato, are in upper, upper epidermis. Why? Because, you know, the down region is exposing to water if stomata is down, right, so they will not take air easily. If the stomata is down, right, so what will happen? The first thing is water can enter to that stomata. And another thing, they will not take air from out environment. So that's why stomata is an upper epidermis, so that its exchange of gases take place easily. So the lower, the it's, it's on the upper epidermis. Why? It is in the upper epidermis so that it helps an exchange of gases and another what? Another it preventing water entry from water. So this is one. Another one, you know, the root of these plants not fully developed, right? It's a uh, because the one thing is roots not fully developed and another and root also there are air spaces and that air spaces uh, because in the mud where these roots are present there is no much oxygen because they are in water so root having what more air spaces right so that more aeration are more the air can move to uh, root easily right or no 
and we know that root need what oxygen for respiration is it clear i hope this is clear so more air space in root so that oxygenation of root happen easily so that oxygen reach to that part easily because the mud in which they are growing that are poorly oxygenated okay you can check here this plant having large surface area of leaf right this is hydrophytic plant i hope up to here this is clear if you having any question you can ask